Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day today. Today, let's cover 10 interesting facts about Boba Fett. Now, of course, there are many more facts to cover, but in this one, we're gonna cover just the top 10. And then in another video, we can do part two or something like that. So let me know in the comments what you'd really like to see in that episode. In no hierarchical order, starting in at number one, Boba Fett as the main baddie in Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi's main antagonist was supposed to be Boba Fett, not Vader or the Emperor. When George Lucas was making Star Wars back in the 70s and 80s, the three films were meant to be the middle part of his planned three trilogy saga. And so originally, instead of it being in episode six, he wanted Luke's second confrontation with Vader after the Empire Strikes Back to be part of his planned follow-up trilogy, which would have been the final battle with the Emperor. You can see hints of this as it's Boba Fett who captures Han at the end of Episode 5. And even though the Star Wars Holiday Special was unique, to put it nicely, and Lucas hated it with a passion, it did introduce the helmeted bounty hunter who George decided to continue to try and develop instead of throwing him out, as he did with the rest of the special. Therefore, for a brief moment, instead of his lackluster plunge into the Sarlacc pit, Luke, Leia, and the rest would have to fight off Boba Fett, Jabba, and the rest of the criminal underground to rescue Han Solo. I guess Act 1 of Return would have been developed kind of into an entire movie. Number 2, Boba Fett vs Cad Bane. Now back when Lucasfilm had not yet been bought by Disney, they had begun to work on some unaired and unfinished episodes, including a four episodic arc that would have dealt with the young Boba Fett teaming up with perhaps the galaxy's second best bounty hunter, Cad Bane. Now Cad was supposed to have known Jango, Boba's father, and or you know his clone and we were going to see Boba put on his iconic armor for the first time. I don't know much about what they planned for the story was, only that the two bounty hunters team up would eventually crumble, leading to an epic duel that only one of them walked away from. And of course, we can guess who. Now my theory is that these episodes have actually been filmed, or at least recorded, as Daniel Logan has mentioned that there are unfinished and unseen Boba episodes from the Clone Wars. Number three. He was the main character in the cancelled video game Star Wars 1313. Jedi Fallen Order is out now in a pretty cool game, but once, we were going to get a very different one. Before the Disney purchase, George Lucas was working on a mature rated video game called Star Wars 1313. This focused on and explored the criminal underbelly of Coruscant. The player would have been Boba Fett, and the game was supposed to have been a tie-in to the Star Wars TV series that George Lucas was working on at the time, which was also about the darker side of the galaxy far, far away. Or in other words, the slums of Coruscant. Though we didn't end up getting neither the show nor the game, elements of both have been inspired in The Mandalorian. Number four. Boba Fett, brother of Darth Vader. While working on the prequels, George Lucas briefly played with the idea that Boba Fett and Anakin Skywalker were brothers. Yep, this is actually true. How squeezing Boba Fett into that family dynamic was meant to work, I don't really know, but the idea doesn't seem to have come out of nowhere, as a clear theme throughout Lucas's six films is about family, specifically the Palpatine, or should I say, the Skywalker family, how they were broken but ultimately restored with admittedly some permanent scar tissue, yet a happy ending with a galaxy free and the future bright, as opposed to say Luke failing to restore the Jedi or having him do something deranged like attempting to murder his nephew, but I digress. Number 5. Boba Fett was originally a man named Jaster Mareel. Before Attack of the Clones, there was a novel that came out way back in 1996 called The Last One Standing, The Tale of Boba Fett, which went into some of the bounty hunter's backstory. It went over his early life, his exile, and the rivalry that he had with Han Solo. Now in the story, Boba identified himself as Jaster Mareel. Whether that was just an alias or his real name was unclear. But later when George Lucas made him the unaltered clone offspring of Jango Fett, the novel's backstory was scrapped. However, the name Jaster Mareel was retconned later into the mentor and father figure of Jango Fett. Jaster would go on and be killed by Jango's Mandalorian rival, a man named Montross. So, when Boba Fett took up his name, it officially became an alias that he used in honor of his father's fallen mentor, while working as a type of lawman called a journeyman protector. Number six, he was a Mandalorian until he wasn't. Like I said earlier, Boba Fett may be the original Mandalorian, but he isn't technically one of them. Again, the culprit is Attack of the Clones, before that film, Boba's origins were kept a bit mysterious, but the common view of him was that he had been a part of a group of evil warriors defeated by the Jedi Knights during the Clone Wars. 
who wore super commando armor from Mandalore. So clearly, he must be a Mandalorian. But once he became a clone created on Kamino, he was no longer a member of that warrior race. Number 7. Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Fett. Boba Fett witnessed his father decapitated in Episode 2, so in Revenge of the Sith, George Lucas considered having Jango's offspring seek out revenge against Master Windu. The bounty hunter would track the Jedi Master down with a squad of clone troopers and surround the Vapod expert, which was how Mace was initially meant to die, with Boba Fett victorious. Of course, George Lucas realized the death of Mace Windu would be more important as a key moment in the transformation of Anakin Skywalker into Darth Vader. So again, like in the original series, Boba Fett's role was supposed to be grandeur, but ultimately drastically reduced in the final release. Now, that would have been pretty cool if he had actually teamed up with some clones and just killed Mace Windu. But sort of unrealistic seeing as how Mace can tap into Shatterpoint and kind of get out of almost any situation. Then again, it is Boba, but also it's little Boba at this point. Number 8. He was married and had a daughter. A young Boba Fett married a female bounty hunter named Sintas Vel and gave up his bounty hunting profession becoming as I've mentioned before, a journeyman protector on the Mandalorian world of Concord Dawn. And together they had a daughter named Aelin. But when Boba's superior officer physically assaulted his wife, the vengeance-seeking Fett killed him in revenge and, as a consequence, was arrested, tried, and exiled from his new home planet. The traumatic incident led to Boba and Sintas getting divorced, and she was left to care for their daughter alone. Though when their daughter was 16, Sintas was on an assignment that resulted in her being placed in Carbonite for 40 years. She was later found and rescued by her granddaughter, Mitra Gev. And though initially suffering from blindness and amnesia, she eventually recovered and made peace with a much older and regretful Boba Fett, and got to know her granddaughter. Unfortunately, she could not be reunited with her daughter, as Jason Solo had accidentally killed Aelin during an interrogation when he was the head of the Galactic Alliance Guard, and was on the same dark side path as his grandfather. Number 9. Boba Fett's Braid Boba Fett's armor is a bit of a mess, aesthetically at least, as it kind of looks like it was scavenged from a number of different sources, but it is also very clearly utilitarian and functional. Every piece seems to have a practical reason and purpose for being there, except for one thing, his braid. At first sight, it doesn't appear to have any discernible purpose. However, Boba has a history of collecting trophies from his quarries, which is what the braid is. It appears to be made from the scalps of Wookiees that he has hunted throughout the galaxy. However, there are some that believe the braid is not composed of Wookiee scalps, but instead the braids of Padawans that he has killed. Given his hatred for the Jedi because of what Mace Windu did to his father, that could very well also be true. Number 10. Boba Fett has fought Darth Vader and walked away alive. You may have seen the comic video that I explained and brought to life just recently, but if you haven't, Here's the rundown. Though he has often been a useful ally of Darth Vader's, when Boba Fett takes an assignment, he follows it through, even if it brings him into direct conflict with the Dark Lord of the Sith himself. Like in this scenario when Grand Moff Tarkin hired him to track down Han Solo and bring the smuggler in, Vader objected to this decision of Tarkin's, so the Grand Moff challenged the Sith to prove his superiority to Boba Fett and complete the mission personally. Both armored bad boys track Han Solo to the Moss Eisley Cantina and end up fighting over the bounty. Boba used a lightsaber that he had taken from one of the Jedi that he had hunted down and killed in his career and actually tried to duel Darth Vader. It didn't end well for him, it didn't last long before Vader disarmed him and threw him against the wall with the Force. Though ultimately Vader did spare the bounty hunter, Solo managed to escape the both of them. Hope you enjoyed this video on top 10 facts about Boba. Let me know which one you found the most interesting down in the comments below and if there's anything that I missed that you want me to add in part 2. Maybe we can go into more detail on the original purpose for Boba in Revenge of the Sith with him killing Mace Windu. Hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Catch you in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.